It is a great honor for me to present you Patrick Baboumian, who is a vegan strongman. He came all the way from England uh, to participate in this festival. And uh, his speech is about uh, basically how he became the strongest vegan in the world. <laughs> so you have plenty of time. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, my voice is strange here. Okay. Uh, Patrick, let me yeah. just repeat for the ones who just mm -hmm. came in that, uh, uh, I'll say it in Greek, έχουμε διερμηνέα ξανά εκεί πέρα για όποιον ή όποια θεωρία απαραίτητο ότι δεν θα καταλάβει την ομιλία στα αγγλικά μπορεί να προσεγγίσει και η Μέρη θα μεταφράζει κατά τη διάρκεια της ομιλίας. Ok, back to you. Ok, so, um, yeah, uh, that's right. I, I just came from England, um, but I'm actually from Germany. So I had a talk in England yesterday. I only spent one hour there and then I had to get back to, the, to my plane to come here. So this weekend was kind of crazy. Um, and also um, the, the night before last night, I spent at the airport because there was no bus or anything in London. So I had to um, spend the night at the airport. And then last night I spent in airplanes. So if I look totally fucked, it's not because I'm vegan. It's, it's, <laughs> I just had a terrible time the last uh, 40 hour, uh, 48 hours. And if I behave strangely, uh, I'm not on drugs, I'm, I'm not uh, drunk, don't call the police. It's just, um, I had a hard time. Okay, thank you. So, and, and thank you for your, um, um, uh, for your understanding um, if, if, if I behave strangely. <laughs> and you still stay here and listen to what I have to say. Okay, so um, yeah, let's just just uh, begin with the whole thing. And one thing that uh, I always ask in uh, before I start is if uh, everyone knows basically what I do. Um, so um, who of you knows or has seen what I do? Just just put your hands up. Okay, okay, that's pretty much probably fifty percent of you. So I'm going to just thank you. I'm going to just uh, show you a little uh, video. Um, with some footage of, uh, of what I do, because it's easier to watch it than if I explain it with words, uh, and it's more entertaining too, we have some music. It's actually a video that a fan put, uh, put on the internet, so let's just watch the video and then I'm going to explain a little bit further. Okay, so here's the video. I think, can we get more sound? That's enough. <laughs> okay. So. Thank you. So um, I, I basically do all kinds of strength sports. Uh, so I have done some bodybuilding when I was younger. Um, in the last 10 years uh, or 12 years, I have done mainly strongman. Um, and I'm, I'm going to just um, explain a little bit what strongman is because a lot of people know what weightlifting is and then they say I'm a weightlifter or a bodybuilder, but that's not uh, exactly what it is. So uh, strongman is basically a, a combination of all strength sports and it started in 1977 as a, um, as a um, TV show 
with the name The World's Strongest Man. And the idea was to bring different strength athletes like weightlifters and uh, bodybuilders and powerlifters, um, to bring them all together and see who really is the strongest of them all. And to not give any of these uh, different athletes an advantage over the others, they invented completely new disciplines. And that's how um, stupid things like pulling trucks and pulling fire engines and lifting logs and stuff like that came into being uh, because um, it was just an invention of, of, of new disciplines. Uh, and that uh, game show, uh, um, TV show was, uh, was happening everywhere, uh, every year. Uh, so now it's still existing and the world's strongest man now is the world championships in a sport that developed um, around this show. Um, and we have national uh, um, competitions too. And when you win your nationals in the heavyweight category, you can call yourself um, the country's strongest man. So that's, that's the idea. And when you get world champion, you're the world's strongest man. Okay, so that's that. Um, but let's go back a little bit um, to, to where I started from, because a lot of the things that I do today can be explained when you uh, know a little bit something about my childhood. So let's begin um, with where I was born. I was born in Iran as a child of Armenian parents um, and, uh, in, in 1979. And in 1979, that was actually when uh, the Islamic revolution in uh, Iran started and a lot of stuff changed. So before the revolution, we had something resembling a democracy. Um, and then after the revolution, we basically got a clerical state with a very authoritarian system. So that wasn't really a change for the good um, in, in many regards. And it also um, brought with it that uh, in, in, uh, in the year after that, um, there was a, a war uh, going on with Iraq. So all of that happened after I was born, but I promise I have nothing to do with it. It was not my fault. So, so um, because of the war, my, uh, my mother was very uh, pessimistic about my future in the country, so uh, she wanted to leave the country uh, to give me a better chance to, um, to develop myself. Um, and we actually did that when I was seven years old. And this picture is took in, in a refugee camp in Germany, and that's me seven years old playing there in the refugee camp. Um, I'm just uh, telling this story for, from the beginning um, to give you a feeling of what motivated me um, seven years later when I was 14 years old to start uh, doing strength sports and uh, have this idea that I wanted to be strong and I wanted to be uh, able to defend myself and especially also defend others. Uh, I think it's a lot connected to the... Um, to the stuff that I seen uh, when the war was going on with bombings and um, also probably I should uh, um, say that um, uh, I lost my dad when I was four years old. So um, all of that was happening while there was no male figure, male strong figure anywhere to relate to. So I sometimes had this urge or, or this um, uh, idea that I should actually be the one who is strong and can help others. Um, while bad things were going on. Um, um, yeah, so that was the situation. And um, as I said, in, when, when I was 14 years old, I made the decision to start um, doing strength sports. And this picture is, with, that's me when I was 17 years old. So that's after three years of training. Um, and um, another motivation for uh, starting to, um, to lift weights and to want, want to get more muscles was also that I was a fan of wrestling, of show wrestling, show fights. Um, and um, we're going to come back to that uh, in, in a later slide. So that's basically it. Now... Um, at, at a certain point in my life, I made the decision to, um, to cut out meat, to, to go vegetarian. Um, and uh, that was after 12 years of, of strength sports, eating a lot of meat, actually. Um, and the, the reason that, that um, I made the decision to cut out meat had actually nothing to do with, with the sport itself. 
the, the reason was, and, and to understand uh, where it came from, I just have a few slides that I want to show you with some rescue animals that we had. So um, even when I was a very small child, uh, I used to, when, when I see, saw um, animals in distress, I always used to um, try to help them. So um, for instance, one story is when I um, found um, a dove um, that, that was, uh, had a, a bird with a, with a broken leg, um, I, I was actually seven years old back then, so seven or eight years old, and we were visiting my uh, uh, uncle of mine, so I didn't know the city, and I was just walking around the block by my own. I saw, I saw the bird, and I just picked it up and wanted to bring it to a doctor, and I was looking for a, for a vet to bring it to. Um, and what happened is uh, I totally lost the way, so I found the vet, actually. Uh, I brought the bird there, and then I didn't know how to get back home, so the police had to bring me back. Um, so um, that's, that's one of the earlier uh, things. And uh, on this picture, you see me with um, uh, a hedgehog called Harold. Uh, Harold lived um, one full winter with us because um, his, uh, his mother was, um, um, died in a car accident. And I found him on the street, and I took him home, and then we had him over winter. And... Um, here are some other um, rescue animals. This is Jacob. Jacob uh, is a crow, um, and um, he, um, I, I found him as a, as a little baby, and um, he, he had um, ants and bugs uh, walking all over his body, so it was in a very, very uh, bad uh, physical situation. And we took him home, and we had him for several months, um, until he was, he was uh, actually able to, um, to survive on his own. So, uh, why am I telling you all of this? <laughs> uh, it's basically just um, to, to get to the point where I made the decision to stop eating animals and uh, to understand where the logic comes from. So, so the logic for me was that um, up to a certain point, I was helping, uh, when I would see animals suffering, I would always try to help them like for instance, Jacob here. Uh, and I would put months and, and, and um, weeks and, and months of time and energy into trying to save, for instance, one bird. And at the same time, I would eat 20 chickens, for instance. So um, at, at a certain point, I just uh, realized that what I was doing was total nonsense. It didn't make any sense. In, in one case, I was trying to help one animal, and then I was uh, eating other animals without thinking anything about it or um, even having any kind of remorse. Um, so I start thinking, why am I actually, why is this? Why is this illogical thing? And what I found out is that in, in the one case for Jacob, um, I saw his problem and Oh, what's that? <laughs> I saw his problem, and uh, because I saw him suffering, it was, natural, it was a natural impulse for me to, to help him. But with the chickens, I was just buying a product. So you jo just go to the shop, you buy something in a package, and you don't hear the screams, you don't see the blood, you don't see everything that's around, all the suffering, all the pain, all the um, um, fear that the animal has. You don't see any of that, and that's why you don't think about it. Um, and I actually realized that probably 90% of society were in the same situation I was. So um, they were actually consuming something that they would normally probably not consume if they would have to see everything that is behind it. Um, my problem uh, was that after starting to think about that, I couldn't close my eyes anymore, so I had to make a decision. So either... I would make the decision that I would say, okay, I don't care about the animals anymore uh, and just continue eating them. Or if I care about them, I should probably uh, start not eating my friends. So um, the, the most crucial part of that was I asked myself the question, would I eat a chicken if I would have to kill the chicken? Would I, have, would I kill it if I would have to do it myself? And the answer was no. So I thought it's just dishonest to consume something, to pay someone to kill an animal if you wouldn't do it yourself. And that was for me the most crucial part at, at that point. Um, so that's, um, I think I might have been, yeah, 
26 years old when, when I made the cut. So I went vegetarian and I was vegetarian for, um, for six years. And one aspect of, of it was also that I wasn't expecting to, you know, get stronger or anything. I was actually expecting to get weaker because throughout my whole career as a, as a strength athlete, I have been told and I have read uh, about animal protein being much, uh, much more efficient for muscle building and everything than plant protein. And that was what I was believing. So, um, so I thought, okay, I'm going to figure out a way to make this work. Um, and for instance, uh, I cut out meat, but I would still have dairy. So I would say, okay, I still have the dairy protein, um, and it's going to probably work. Um, and the, the decision was quite easy for me for two reasons. The one reason was I never loved meat, so I was just using it as a protein source. So getting rid of it was pretty easy. Um, and also, at that point, I was making my A degree uh, uh, on, on evening school, and uh, I wanted to study psychology. So um, my main focus was on studying and, uh, and school and, and working. So training was not that, uh, not that important. So I thought, okay, if I, if I lose some strength, I don't care so much. So I went vegetarian. And after six months, my, every, everything improved. I, I was getting stronger, I was getting heavier, and I couldn't actually understand what was happening because I wasn't expecting anything uh, like that. And I wasn't even um, training um, as, um, uh, as ambitiously uh, as I trained normally because, um, as I said, my focus was on studying. So, um, so it came as a surprise to me that everything was, was developing so well. Um, and for that reason I started thinking about um, starting to compete somewhere again. Okay, here, um, before I get to the next slide, here are some more animals, <laughs> some more pictures. This is Jacob again. This are uh, my ex-girlfriend's pucks. <laughs> You're laughing. Actually, it's much more funny in, in, in German, because in German, the word for pucks and the word for boobs is the same. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's much more funny. So, um, um, <laughs> okay. So this is uh, this is one of our cats uh, that we have from uh, that we have from the shelter at the moment, uh, and this is me after taking a shower. Um, yeah. So let's get to the next uh, to the next step. Um, so I was looking for a new challenge, and um, and um, because. Uh, uh, one thing was uh, I had all these uh, gains in, in strength and in body mass and everything, so everything was um, um, training-wise, everything was going well. And at the same time, I finished evening school um, and started uh, studying psychology. And um, for me, that made actually a lot easier because um, when I was in evening school, I was still um, I was still working full time. And then when I started studying, I was only studying, so I had some free time on my hands. And I thought, why not look for a kind of competition or something? So I started thinking about things that fascinated me as a child. And the first thing that came into my mind was, um, yeah, I like to uh, watch wrestling. So probably it would be funny to do something uh, in regards of wrestling. So we're talking about 2005, 2006. That's when... Um, when Wikipedia was something new and YouTube was new. So I started researching the wrestlers that I, was, that I liked as a child. And the problem is 50% of them were dead, like British Bulldog and uh, Owen Hart and a lot of the wrestlers that I uh, were interested in, they didn't live anymore because obviously the, the, um, the, the lifestyle of a wrestler, they're a lot, uh, traveling a lot, which I do too now. Um, <laughs> but but, but uh, with, with the fights and everything, it's a lot of stress on the body. So they have to use painkillers and sometimes they do drugs. And the whole lifestyle is not really sustainable. So um, I thought, okay, wrestling seems to be not the right thing. I don't want to die soon. So, <laughs> so I looked for something else. And uh, another thing that I was interested in as a child was strongman. Uh, problem is... Uh, I already told you what strongman is, but I haven't told you a lot about how strongman look like. I mean, those of you who have seen it on TV might know that these guys are giants. Like, 
the, the smallest of them or, or the average size for them would be 1 meter 90. Um, and then some of them are 2 meter 10, like basketball players. So, so, and, and they're not only tall, but they, they would be taller than 2 meters and also 200 kilos heavy. So I was not in a position to think about you know, competing with those guys. Um, and, um, and when I do something, I want to be successful. I want to try to you know, challenge myself and, and get uh, to the best in the world. And it's, it's always, um, I'm, I'm competitive in, in that way. So, so I thought, okay, strongman is, is not something that I can uh, do. But when I started researching it, I found out there was a lightweight category. So, um, and the lightweight category in strongman goes up to 105 kilos. That's lightweight. So, so I thought, okay, um, if, if it's up to 105 kilos, and that was exactly my body weight at that time, uh, I, th uh, I thought I might have a chance to, to compete against those guys because they're not heavier than I, than I am, so it might be okay. So I started Strongman in 2006. I won uh, the German Nationals in 2007 the first time, in 2009 the second time in the lightweight category. And in Germany... Lightweight and heavyweight do the same competition. So um, you, you do the same thing, but after the competition you get your points and then you have a, you have a placing in your own division and then also you have an overall placing with the big guys. So you, can, you actually have two placings as a, as a lightweight. And every time that I won as a lightweight, I was also fifth in the overall. So only four of the big guys were actually stronger than I was. So in 2010, I thought, hmm, if I gain some weight, I might be able to even compete against the big guys because I'm, I'm already pre pretty competitive. Um, so I tried that uh, to, to go into the heavyweight category uh, the first time in 2010. I became second in the heavyweight category. And then in 2011, that's the picture here, I won the heavyweight category. When you win the heavyweight category, you call yourself the strongest man of the country. So that's uh, where the title Germany's Strongest Man comes from. Now, um, that wouldn't have changed anything significantly in my life if it wasn't for something that I did afterwards. So as I already told you, um, before I started Strongman, I already went, went vegetarian. So that means that uh, throughout my whole competitions as a Strongman, I was all the time I was vegetarian. Um, and at that point, uh, I, I had a blog, and in my blog, I made a post, and I pretty much celebrated myself and how glorious I am, and uh, just stupid, idiotic stuff. Um, I have won the highest crown in strength sports and uh, in Germany, and so on. So all that nonsense. But the last sentence was, "So I have finally proven that being vegetarian makes you a better athlete." And what happened then was something I didn't calculate. Um, there, there were like literally thousands of blogs and, and uh, um, websites and even a Buddhist monk um, somewhere, I, I, I don't know, on the other side of the world um, quoted me with that sentence and to, to you know, uh, show that you can be vegetarian and you can be strong and that it's not true that you need to eat meat to be strong. Um, and the same thing happened also in Germany. So in Germany, I was in the media and all over the place. I was in all big newspapers. Uh, I was in all big uh, TV magazines. And everyone wanted to speak with that strange guy who was only eating vegetables uh, and is the strongest guy in the country. So um, at that point, uh, I, I had a little struggle uh, with myself because... Up to that point, I was everything I was doing, I was just doing for myself. So I, it was just a private decision. Um, I always, uh, I, I was pretty vocal about it, so I always told everyone what I was doing and why I was doing it. But I, I was not thinking that I'm going to change the world or I'm going to change anyone else's life with what I was doing. But at that point, with all the media um, um, focus that I had, with all... Um, with all those blogs and everything that internationally happened, I got a lot of feedback from a lot of people, especially young men. Um, and those young men, in, in most cases, they were uh, actually thanking me for um, being an example 
um, with something that uh, they were thinking themselves, but they were um, anxious to speak out because they had this feeling of when, when they would say they're compassionate about animals, um, then they would not seem manly or they would seem like a softy or, or something. And uh, when you are young, you know, you, you have this peer pressure of trying to be the tough guy and, you know, traditionally men um, um, are thought to be, if you want to be traditionally masculine, you just don't give a fuck about anything and you just, you know, you kill everything and eat everything and, uh, yeah, so you're just basically a prick. Um, so so um, they, they had this pressure to try to, you know, be, be that macho. Um, and now, um, when, when someone would have make uh, fun of them, they could say, hey, but Germany's strongest man does the same thing, so fuck you. Um, so, <laughs> and, and that helped those, those people a lot. So what I want to say is I was realizing that I was now really changing something m that was much bigger than I, was, than I myself. So um, the, the responsibility that I had was much higher. Uh, and I'm saying that because at that point, I already knew that coming from, from a perspective where I wanted to actually reduce animal suffering, being vegetarian is not really the answer to the problem. Because uh, if you take a look at what happens in the dairy industry, how the cows are treated, or what happens to their babies after they give birth to, so, so they can give milk, of course their babies get killed and uh, someone eats them. So... Uh, and also, if you take a look at the production of, of eggs, there's a lot of suffering. It's, it's terrible. So um, if you're a vegetarian, you just, you know, you, it's like saying, I'm not hitting children one, uh, one day in a week. Well, that doesn't really make you a decent person. So, so I knew it, what I was doing was not enough. Um, and up to that point, I was still doing it because I didn't know if it, I could merc make it work um, in, in a vegan way. I, I, I didn't know if, if it would work. So, um, so I could still live with the fact that I was not really doing the, the right thing. But now I felt this responsibility because I was influencing such a lot of people to do it the right way. So I thought I might really have to go vegan. Um, and I, I, had, I had three concerns um, that were holding me back. Um, this is... The three concerns. I call them my three, uh, the three A's. Uh, so the, the first one is addiction. So as I already told you, going vegetarian was super easy for me because I never liked meat. But I have always, as a child, I have loved dairy. And um, so, so thinking about not having another glass of milk or even, God forbid, chocolate milk, um, it, was, it was just a scary thought for me for the rest of my life to not be able to, to have dairy products. So, um, so, and when I say addiction, some people think that I'm like over-exaggerating uh, um, the, the whole thing or I'm uh, speaking in, as a metaphor, but when I say addiction, I actually mean addiction because um, there is a biological basis for, for the problem. And one thing that you might have realized if you talk to people and try to convince them uh, that veganism is uh, good for their body or, or, or anything else, if you try to convince them with facts, um, a lot of people will tell you, okay, I understand what you, where you're coming from and I can imagine to stop eating meat. But what I can't imagine is stopping to have cheese. And I think it, it might be even worse here in Greece because you have a lot of uh, very famous uh, dairy products here. Um, and it's the same thing in the culture where I come from. So it's very, very hard for people to even think about that. And just to show you how, how bad I myself uh, have been um, with that, I had days where I had 10 liters of milk. That's two gallons of dairy milk. Um, and in the end, I switched to curd cheese. I don't know, um, is, is there a Greek uh, word for curd cheese? What is it? Cinderella? <laughs> well, so I switched to that and there's a low fat version of that. I would consume that as, as my main uh, protein source because it's cheap. Um, and I would have three kilos of that, of Cinderella every day. <laughs> So, so, 
so I was a very bad person. I was, I was really, really a junkie, a, a, um, a dairy junkie. Um, and, and, and that was my concern number one. So I thought if I try it and I fail because I'm just a junkie, that might not be good. So number two was acid. So throughout my whole life, I have had problems with a heart burn um, because I was always over acidized. Um, and I would actually use milk as a, and, and dairy products as a remedy. So when I would drink milk, my heartburn would go away. So I always thought that milk was my remedy for my heartburn, which was a normal process in my body. So, so uh, thing number two was I thought if I go vegan, I might die from heartburn or I would have a hole in my, in my belly and the acid coming out. So that was problem number two. Problem number three is athletic performance. So the whole idea was I want to go vegan. I want to show that I'm going to still be strong as a vegan. So what I do now for vegetarianism, I can then do for veganism and try to push the right ideas. Problem, I wasn't convinced that it would work. So I thought if I go vegan and then I get weak, I'm not helping anyone. I am actually damaging what uh, the movement that I want to help. Um, so that was that was a huge problem too. Now um, let's see what what actually happened when I made the change and when I got vegan. So what happened? Can you read that? Okay, so. So if you understand the job, you, uh, the, the joke, you got that um, none of my concerns really turned out to be true. What actually happened is my, my overall health got much, much better. My performances got better. Pretty much everything in my body was getting better than it was before. For instance, when I was vegetarian, I used to have an iron deficiency. Um, and I even had supplements with iron, but the problem is the dairy that I was, uh, and, and I was having lots of dairy, it was blocking the iron. So even the supplements wouldn't help. I was iron deficient all the time. When I went vegan, the iron deficiency just went away. And a lot of things like that happened too. So yeah, here, here are some facts. So um, after going vegan half a year after that, I won the European Championships in raw powerlifting. Uh, then I, in the same year, I set a world record in the keg lift. That is, you have a beer keg, but it's not filled with delicious beer, um, but with uh, iron plates. So nothing nice to drink, but uh, you, you have to lift it over your head. Uh, and I did that with 150 kilos. That's like three normal uh, beer kegs. Um, and then I did a world record in the front hold, which uh, just means that you are having 20 kilos in front of your body with outstretched arms and you're holding it as long as you can. The world record was 1 minute and 16 seconds and I did 1 minute and 26 seconds in the Guinness World Record Show. Then the year after that, uh, I did a world record in, in yoke walk. I have a video of that. We're going to watch the video then. Uh, and then I broke my own world record too in 2015. So a lot of great stuff happened. I was getting stronger and heavier. Um, and let's just get back to those uh, three problems that I, that I had uh, before going vegan because it's interesting to see what happened in my body, especially when it comes to biochemical processes. So as I said, the addiction actually is a biochemical problem. It is not that people think, oh, dairy is just, it just tastes so good. Say so they're just addicted to the taste. But what, what's the actual problem is when you produce cheese, you're enriching something in the, um, in the um, uh, dairy protein called casein. That's one part of dairy protein. And if you digest casein, and that's not only in cheese, casein is in everything that's from dairy, um, when you metabolize the casein, you, um, you have as a byproduct in your metabolism something called casomorphines. And, and casomorphines are exactly the same thing as endorphines. You probably have heard of endorphines. Um, so basically en endorphines make you feel good, take away pain, and yeah, just make you be 
happy. They make you happy. That's uh, how you would say it in, in, in simple terms. Um, and chasomorphines are exorphines. So endorphines inside the body, exorphines coming from outside. Um, but it's the same thing. And biologically, it, it makes a lot of sense to have them in milk because normally milk is not made for us. It's made for the baby cow. And when the baby cow drinks the milk and it feels good, you have a binding process between mother and child. Now, when we go and we steal that milk and we drink what's actually for the baby cow, we have that same binding process with, you know, with, with, with your milk package. So that's, that's the actual problem of the addiction. Now, here's the good news. The good news is, like with every other addiction, if you just make a cut, a clear cut, um, within a few weeks, you're fine. So I already told you that I was probably the worst milk addict there is in the, in the whole world. I needed two or three weeks, and I was fine. And, and it happened automatically. Um, like, for instance, my, my ex, uh, um, not, not ex, oh, whatever, my wife. <laughs> I'm very confused, as I told you. <laughs> very confused. Uh, so <laughs> my, my wife, back then she was, uh, she was my fiancé. We, we weren't married back then. Um, she, she bought a lot of vegan chocolate because she feared that I'm going to have these urges to, to have milk chocolate and, and stuff like that. And to help me, she bought um, chocolate from rice milk, vegan chocolate milk, and so on, um, and uh, to, to make it easier for me. And what happened was I wasn't even touching it because this whole addiction just, just went away. And um, I always thought that I was eating chocolate because I was addicted to the sugar. But um, after I got rid of the, the caseine addiction, um, it, I, I was having a lot less chocolate, so it seems that the casein is actually the, the worst uh, addictive factor than, than, than the sugar. So I'm still eating chocolate from time to time, but I'm not addicted to it anymore. So I, back then I used to sometimes get crazy and eat packages of chocolate. That's not happening anymore, which is a good thing for someone as heavy as I am. So, so let's get uh, to the acid. So I already told you about my heartburn, and I thought probably on the third day I'm going to be at the level where I'm going to die from heartburn. Now, after two days, I suddenly, uh, I suddenly realized I wasn't having any heartburn anymore. So what I was actually thinking was the remedy, the whole milk and dairy and everything seemed to be actually causing the problem. Um, and that has a biochemical uh, basis too. So... Animal protein, in any regard, uh, it doesn't matter if it's from meat or if it's from milk or eggs, it's always rich in sulfur-containing amino acids. And the problem with sulfur-containing amino acids is that if you have a lot of them, when you digest them, you get sulfuric acid as a byproduct. And that just acidizes your, uh, your stomach. That's not a problem because the body has ways to deal with acid, so it's... You, you, it's not a problem per se, but the problem is that when your body constantly has to fight against acid, it gets very inefficient with other things. For, uh, and, and one thing is, for instance, that um, your, your recovery, if you're not over-acidizing your body, is much faster. So what I was feeling in training was when I would have a hard training session, I would recover much faster after I went vegan. Um, and also... Um, Inflammatory processes in, in your body are much worse if your body has to fight um, um, uh, acid. So uh, with that, uh, I, I, I had a lot of, um, well, what I'm doing is a lot of stress to the bones and, and, uh, and to the passive um, 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 movement system and to, to the tendons. So I was having a lot of pain there, and that's uh, because of inflammation. Um, and that pain went, went away, so I wouldn't have to uh, take any painkillers anymore. Um, and um, an interesting factor about that is that when I wanted to go vegan, the first person I told that was my mother. And when I told my mother I was uh, about to go vegan, she totally went nuts. Because, <laughs> because she, she, was, she was accepting the fact that I was vegetarian for years, 
although she thought uh, I'm just, you know, stupid, um, and she couldn't understand what I was doing. But when I said I want to go vegan, she thought like, now he's getting extreme. Now he's getting radicalized. Now he's going to turn into a terrorist. <laughs> so, so, so she was really, really nervous and, and had in a very bad mood. And then I said, okay, I'm going to tell my fiance. She's now my wife. So, but at that moment, she also totally went crazy. Uh, one, th one thing that she told me is, what is going to be the next step? Are you going to blow up a butcher's shop? Or what are you? So, so it was the same thing. It seemed so extreme that they were thinking, I, I, I'm in the process of radicalization. Although I was just trying to think logically. I was just using logic, nothing, nothing else. So uh, I'm just telling you that because both of them are now vegan for more than four years. So um, with my mom, the whole thing went like that. Um, I found out that my joint pain uh, was getting better. Then I made some research and I found out that the problem or um, the, the, the basis for that was the over acidizing and the um, inflammatory processes. Now, my mother, um, she suffers from rheumatoid arthritis. And that has a lot to do with inflammation, with, with overreacting um, immu immune system. And inflammation is nothing else than your immune system working. So I told her that I found out that my vegan nutrition helped me with inflammation, and she, I wanted her to just test it and see what happens to her problem because she had to take uh, very strong medicine, um, uh, cytostatics and, and, and very toxic stuff uh, she had to uh, put into her body and a lot of painkillers too. So I said, just try it for a few weeks and see what happens. She's vegan since then because um, she, had, she didn't have to take any painkillers anymore. It was getting so much better. Um, it's still in her body, so she has to take a very, very low dosage of the normal toxic stuff that, uh, that she gets. But everything else she just cut away. And also she had a problem with uh, diabetes, and that also reversed. So she don't, doesn't take anything against diabetes anymore. She lost a lot of weight, and she's super happy, and now thinks veganism is the greatest thing. So, um, and, and with my wife, it was just an automatic thing to happen. I just uh, let her, um, um, just, I just basically told her, just let me do what I want to do and then see what happens and you, you're going to be, we're, we're all going to be fine. And she was just watching me doing this and then she was watching me giving all those interviews in TV. And then, of course... You have information coming from my mouth, getting into her head. Um, so I wasn't pushing her directly, but with all that inflammation, uh, information, and with uh, with all the input, uh, it was just an automatic thing. After six months or so, uh, after six weeks, she was vegetarian, and then after six months, she was vegan. Okay, that's that. So acid wasn't wasn't a problem, um, also. And now let's get to athletic performance. Well, I already told you, um, I won a lot of titles and, and uh, um, set some world records. So athletic performance was uh, going well too. Um, now I have a, a, a video of one of the world records, I think. Yeah, that's uh, Toronto 2013. So I told you uh, the facts, but um, we have a short video to, to actually see what I was doing because I think the thing with the, with the world records is a pretty crucial part of my work. Um, and that's because I'm, since I went vegan, um, my mindset towards my training and my competing has changed completely. I was competing, b before I went vegan, I was just competing to you know, win competitions. That was what I was uh, working for. Um, and after making that decision to go vegan, I, I mean, I went into the whole thing with the idea to trying to do the right thing and to trying to promote the right thing. So when I then went, go to a, a competition or when I would go into my training, um, I always feel like I'm doing this like for billions of animals. I'm doing this to, you know, trying to... Um, <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Um, um, and, and, and I always feel strange when, when people applaud <laughs> because, because for me it's just a logical thing, right? Uh, so um, I, I, I'm, for, for me it's just the logic is 
I ha everyone gets tools. Every one of you has talents and has stuff that life gives you. Um, and I'm just trying to make the best out of the tools that life gave me. And one of the tools is that I have a talent for um, the stuff that I do at competitions. So I'm just trying to use that to, you know, um, um, make the world a little bit better. So um, I'm, I'm just uh, telling you that to, um, to, the actual message is that all, all the records that I um, set and all the competitions that I did in the last five and a half years are actually P PR stunts <laughs> to get more media attention, to get more focus, to try to work against the myth that being strong and eating meat is in any connection to each other. Um, and, and one thing I think that's, um, that that's probably brings it to, to the point is that before I went vegan myself, I was vegetarian for six years. And it took me those six years to get to the point to um, have the courage to go vegan because I thought it wouldn't work. In the last two or three years before I went vegan, I had vegan strength athletes, friends of mine, they were vegan and they were trying to influence me and they were trying to educate me and told me to um, try it uh, with, with vegan nutrition and it would be much better. And I just thought they're idiots. I, I just thought, hey, and, and, and the problem with that was none of those athletes was on my level. I was competing internationally. None of the, uh, those athletes would be on the same level that I was competing. So I thought, if it works, why is there no one in the world doing it on a high level? There were vegan runners and vegan um, athletes in a lot of sports, but there was no one in strength sports on the level that I was uh, at. So I thought it, it probably doesn't work. And then when I did it, I still was thinking it wouldn't work, but I thought it, it is just the right thing to do, so I have to try to make it work. Um, and then when I saw that it worked, um, all I was thinking about was, um, well, I, I was lacking that one person to give me the courage to do it. So maybe now I am that one person for like thousands of other people. So that became like a mission to me. Um, and what it, what it actually does is, for instance, in Toronto, when I did this rocket attempt, the biggest newspaper in, in Canada had an interview with me. The next day I was on their third page with a full page. Um, it was about the uh, vegetarian food festival where I did the world record thing. And the whole page was just about my record attempt. And, um, with, and I had an interview. And in that interview, I get asked, why? Why are you uh, doing that? And why are you not eating any animal product? And then I can bring out the message, and then I can try to educate people and, and try to you know, just, just give people input so they can have their own thoughts on it. Um, so, so that's why I do all of that. Um, and let's now just, just watch the video to see what happened. So this is Yoke Walk, 555 kilos for 10 meters. And we need the sound. With sound? Okay, a little bit more. was the most important part. Did you hear what I, what I, what I said? I said vegan power. <laughs>
<laughs> so, so, so that's the, that's the whole uh, reason I'm doing uh, what I'm doing for the last uh, almost six years. Um, and uh, well, the, the record thing was actually part of a big documentary that we're doing. Um, the documentary started with, as a, as a one-man project by James Wilkes. Um, he's um, he won the. Um, the ninth edition of The Ultimate Fighter. Does anyone know The Ultimate Fighter? That's a TV show in, in, in the US. It's basically um, like, do you have this uh, Greece next top model thing here in TV, that stupid thing? So so, so that's the same thing only with uh, people um, hitting each other. So it's, it's fighters, they live in the same house for, for several weeks and they have a tour tournament Everyone uh, fights against each other, and then one uh, of them wins. Um, and, and it's very, very big in the U.S. And uh, James won the, um, the, sixth, uh, the ninth edition of it. And uh, after that, so he was pretty much on the, on the height of his career. And then he injure, injured uh, his, his leg. And that was, all of that uh, happened in, in, this, in the same uh, time when I went vegan. So with him, it was after he had this uh, injury, he had to have time off because he couldn't train. So he started researching nutrition and he found out that this whole meat and strength thing uh, was, was bullshit. So he uh, started researching veganism and um, found, found out about me and I was vegan, uh, I was vegan at that time. So... Um, his idea was to visit different vegan strength athletes uh, in, in typically masculine sports, like fighting and strength sports and, and uh, um, sports that you would probably consider macho. So, um, and, and the whole idea was to show that you can be a really, really tough guy and still care about animals and, and be vegan and, and um, um, have these uh, thoughts, ethical thoughts. So um, that was his idea, and it started with him just, uh, it's, um, well, he, he invested $12,000 into equipment and uh, just came and visited me for the first time, just with a camera, and, and interviewed me. And then some people um, heard about him, and they put a few hundred thousand dollars into the project, so they came back with three cameras and, and with five people and we did everything again for the second round and then they invited me to, to Toronto where I did the world record thing so it was part of the movie. And then we got, well, um, James Cameron into the project and people putting a few million into the project so they came back for a third time with... Um, a bus <laughs> and a lot of very expensive cameras <laughs> and we did everything again um, and now it's really really huge it's going to I think the first trailer might be in, in a few weeks or in a few months we'll have the first trailer it's, it's a huge huge project and uh, we're basically planning to, to, to have a major major impact on, on well men culture and, and trying to influence young men uh, with, with that uh, thing so um, with, with what I do, I have a lot of uh, people working for the same thing and, and, and fighting for the same thing. And we're like basically a big, huge network now, even also with, with people with a lot of money and a lot of um, influence. And we're trying to really, really hammer this thing out and, and make something happen. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you, thank, thank you so much. Oh, what is this? Oh, okay, let's let this be the the ending. Do we still have sound? Okay. Strength must build up, not destroy. It should not do itself, not others who are weaker. Used without responsibility, it causes nothing but harm and death. I can lift the heaviest weights but I cannot take the responsibility of my shoulders. Because the way we use our strength defines our fate. What traces will I leave on my path into the future? Do we really have to kill in order to live? My true strength lies in not seeing weakness as weakness. 
strength meets no victims. My strength is my compassion. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, if if you want to have more of that, <laughs> if, uh, if you want to have more of that and more in in depth information, especially on the nutrition part and uh, recipes and and uh, also my, um, vitamins and and everything that you have to know when you tra transition from um, from an omnivorous diet to, to a vegan diet, I also have a book with me, and the organization has has bought a, a few. We, we I'm going to have a signing hour outside, so if you want to get the book. I'm going to be outside um, for for some time, uh, and signing books and taking pictures, and uh, also for Q and A and stuff. Do we still have time for Q and A here? Of course. <laughs> okay, so we can still have a Q and A session uh, if you want to uh, stay. Let's say ten minutes or so, yeah, uh, and then we go outside. And if you have more questions, then probably, we can do them. We can uh, do them outside. Yes, ten minutes. Uh, so. All of you who want to ask a question, please raise your hand so we can yeah. see. Okay, uh, where is Ariadne? She has the microphone. Okay. Or right probably if you're just loud enough, everyone will hear the question. Uh, let's, let's use the microphone okay. because... Okay. I will use the microphone. Uh, I would like to ask you if you are familiar with intermittent fasting and veganism. Yeah. Because it's really important to know uh -huh. like the effectiveness of it. Yeah, the thing is, um, I think it, it it is something that that uh, works for health. Uh, I, I would think I never tried it myself, but I know research um, that has been done with animals. Um, um, it's um, in, and they basically take rats, uh, and they have three groups of, of rats. The one group gets as much food as they want. The other group gets uh, a cut. Uh, to 65 percent of as much as the other group eats, and then the third group gets a cut of they only get 35 percent of what they would normally eat uh, if if they would get as much as they want. And what you find out is that um, the rats who only eat 35 percent are the rats who live the longest. Now, what happens basically is that if you don't eat that much, and intermediate uh, fasting um, does something similar your metabolism goes down. And when your metabolism goes down and goes slower, that means that the, like the, the, the clock in every cell of your body gets slower. And that means you're aging slower. So you're going to l live longer. Um, so you have two ways of doing that. You can cut down on calories just and eat uh, with a normal, uh, normal schedule. Or you can do intermediate fasting, which is... Um, allows you to have probably a little bit more calories and still have this benefit of slowing down your metabolism. So in the theory, it works. Um, the only thing, the only problem that I have with it is I like eating. <laughs> so so, so it, it would make it hard for me to, uh, to, to do it. And also I have this, um, my, my philosophy is to do nothing that feels unnatural to my to my to my own body and to my own uh, instinct. And instinctively, um, I'm, I'm I like to eat little amounts and a lot of times uh, during the day. So I can't even eat big amounts. Um, and 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 therefore, it's it's not the right thing for. I mean, it's it's not not uh, something that uh, I think it's something for me. But I, th I think that it might work for, for several, th uh, for several uh, goals. Yeah. Thank you for your answer. Thank you. I, I want to ask one question more, if it's possible. Uh, let me be a prick here and ask someone else, because of we course. have a limited time. And yeah, yeah, of course. I yeah, you can also come, come outside. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Uh, how many hours uh, do you train per day? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, well, that's very different. Uh, what, what I do at the moment uh, is much different from uh, what I did when I was competing at Strongman. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention is that uh, I hurt myself uh, and one year ago. I had, uh, um, at the World Championships in, in log lifting, I uh, tore my tricep. I don't know if, if it's visible, but uh, I had a surgery done on, on the tricep um, and, and the tendon was 90% gone, so we had to refix it. Uh, and for that, I had to take a uh, certain um, time off. And now that I'm back at, at, um, at training uh, fully, I do, my, my training is very different because I, I do more overall fitness and a lot of cardio training that I didn't, didn't do before. But as a strong man, the volume is not that much. So back then, I used to only train three times uh, a week and just, just one or two hours. That, that was it. But, but now I train pretty much every day for two or three hours. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, thank you for sharing your story. Really motivating and very uh, inspiring. Uh, my, my question is probably quite silly, but I have to ask, since you are so strong, such, so big as well, and in such a high level in sports. Uh, do, do you take, do you need any food supplements like proteins yeah. or carbohydrates and yes. um, stuff like that? Yeah. Um, now, I, I use supplements, but I have used supplements throughout my whole career. So, uh, so um, the supplements that I use, um, with the exception of B12, have nothing to do with veganism. So um, B12 is actually the only supplement that you would have to use when you go vegan, everything else you find in normal food. Uh, but B12 is made from bacteria, and um, you either have the chance to eat dirt, <laughs> where, it's, where, where B12 is contained. That's actually the natural way, because some people say, ah, you have to use supplements, that means veganism is not natural. That's not right. If you would eat naturally, everything would be dirty that you eat, and then you get B12 from the dirt. But um, as we use pesticides on everything, we can't really do that in, in our modern society. That's why we have to use uh, the B12 supplements. But every other supplement that I use, for instance, uh, uh, protein uh, supplements, vegan protein supplements, um, I have, before I went vegan, have non-vegan protein supplements too. So it's, it has just something to do with, uh, with the level that I'm at and also with my lifestyle because I'm traveling a lot. So when you're, for instance, in planes like for uh, 10 hours, um, it's hard to get, you know, the amount of food that you would normally uh, uh, have to get in for all nutrients. So you just basically have a shake or something in between. Um, and and that's, that's the practical reason for that. It's, um, it has nothing to do with veganism or with anything. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, here. Ariadne, here. 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 So until the microphone uh, arrives to the people who will ask the question, uh, I was wondering if you've influenced uh, uh, your co-athletes, if any strongmen, uh, other strongmen right now yeah. have transitioned into a vegan lifestyle, vegan diet, yeah. since you've, you are doing something well, <laughs> yeah. winning all those titles. Yeah, well, um, you, have to, you have to discriminate between two groups. The one group is uh, a lot of the people that I compete against are, are guys who train for 10 or 20 years. So they are in my age group and um, they, they have this history of bullshit that, <laughs> you know, from the fitness industry, animal protein, you have to have animal protein, you have to have protein shakes, you have to have this, this. So they have all these brainwashing in their heads and it's really, really hard to convince them. So. Even if, you, if, you, if they see how you compete. I, I can tell you one story to, to bring that to the point. Uh, I competed in, in, in the World Championships in China against the Eastern European guy. Eastern European guy didn't know who I was, but he heard from the other guys, that's the strange vegetarian vegan idiot. So um, he knew what I was doing, but he didn't know me personally. And the competition went for 10 days. So... I noticed he was watching me for three days or so. Every time I was eating, he was sitting somewhere where he could watch me. And it was just like Sherlock Holmes, you know. He would just check what I was eating. 
Um, and in China, it was really, really hard. I was eating just fucking um, uh, um, uh, rice the, all the time because everything was with some kind of creepy meat, you know, like with frogs and, and dog. No, I don't know. They, had, they didn't have any dog, but they had all kinds of creepy stuff. Uh, so, so I was having very hard time uh, sticking to my diet there. And then also, I, I didn't have any protein source with me. So the only thing that came close to something with protein was coconut milk from the hotel bar, uh, from the mini bar. And I was, I was using tons of coconut milk. And it doesn't have a lot of protein. That's a bad thing. Okay, so um, the, the thing is, the, the guy watches me for three or four days. And then he approaches me. And he says, ah, yeah, you're the vegetarian guy, right? And I said, yeah, I'm vegan, and it's that and that. And then he's like, now, I have been watching you for three days. And I say, okay, yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, I see that you don't eat any meat. I say, yeah, that's correct. But I know you are lying. When you go up to the hotel room, you're having a steak, right? <laughs> so... So that's basically the problem. It's so far away from what they can imagine, especially because they're ignorant about a lot of stuff. So they think when you're vegan, you only eat salad. When you only, if I would only eat salad, I wouldn't look like this. So I have to have protein-rich stuff. So there, there's a certain, you know, there are certain rules that you, that you have to um, and make sure you're, you're getting the nutrients and everything. But then you're fine. So I tried to, uh, try to explain it to him. But, uh, well, the last time I saw him was before the, um, before the World Championships where I tore my tricep. Uh, and that was in, uh, in Lithuania. And he is from Lithuania. So um, the first thing he says to me when, when I see him on the park, parking lot of the hotel is, Ah, are you still doing that stupid vegan thing? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm still doing that. And then there comes a voice from the other side of the parking lot. Wow, you're Patrick Baboumian. And it was a Lithuanian guy. I'm vegan too. And, <laughs> and that totally like ruined his whole wor worldview that there are Lithuanian people who are vegan and know who I am. It's, so it was funny. But yeah, that, that's the, so that's the one group. And then the other group is younger athletes. I have a lot of younger athletes uh, even um, a lot of them are, for instance, um, influencing a lot of people via, via um, YouTube. So like YouTube fitness guys. Uh, and I have some of them who, uh, when I went vegan, uh, and a lot of other people went vegan, they were saying, ah, that, that doesn't work, and uh, I don't know why they're doing that. And uh, some of them uh, are now actually in that movie that we're making, because they are now vegan activists and, and totally believe in that. So. Thank you. So, next question. Yeah. Uh, hello, Patrick. Huge fan here, man. Hi. Uh, I never thought I'd ask you a question, but I'd like to know, uh, what do you eat in a day for strength and stamina? And what's your favorite vegan food? I'm a vegan here. <laughs> okay. Um, so, basically, um, at the moment, I'm, I'm not having a lot of calories because I'm trying to lose weight. At the moment, I'm trying to uh, get more overall fit. Uh, so, I'm having a, at about 4,000 calories now. Um, <laughs> Well, I used to have six to seven thousand, so it's less. So, um, and also a lot of that is in liquid form because I'm actually, when I was younger, I would eat a ton of stuff when I was like 15, 16 years old. But now I get full quite quick, especially when, when you have vegan stuff, you have always a lot of uh, fiber. So when you eat stuff, you, you get full quite quick and then I need extra uh, uh, calories. What I do is I have them in liquid form. So I have shakes and smoothies and uh, soy chocolate milk, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, so um, that's one thing then um, when, when I eat normal stuff, I uh, try to always combine legumes with uh, grains. So like rice with beans, rice with lentils, and um, stuff like that. And that's also pretty easy for me because I'm influenced by, um, uh, by the uh, Persian cuisine because I'm born in Iran, so my mom has always cooked uh, a lot of that stuff. And it's always a lot of legumes together with rice. So that's pretty much how I still eat. And some soy products. Okay, one last question because uh, we don't have much time. And then we can still have a lot of questions outside. Okay, maybe two last questions because they are close. Okay. There. The 
The bad thing is I'm just not good in giving quick answers. <laughs> Always talk for half an hour. <laughs> good evening. Uh, nice to meet you. Hmm? I was wondering uh, if you could give me an advice. I, my husband is a peace can. That means he doesn't... Uh, Uh, get any animal products apart from uh, fish. Uh, apart from the ethics part, I was wondering what uh, would you advise me to tell him <clears throat> in order to convince him uh, to take the fish mm -hmm. out of his uh, uh, nutrition, uh, mm -hmm. out of his diet. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you would have to ask him why he has the fish in it. And I know... Uh, I know why. Yeah, I, okay. I, had al I have already mm -hmm. asked him. Uh, his answer is because he thinks... Uh, Omega-3? He believes that fish is, uh, has a lot of privilege in nutrition. Yeah, that's... Um, And there is no substitute uh, mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, I know. That's you, his opinion, of course. Yeah, you, Thank you. No, that's not only his opinion. That's why I'm asking. So uh, a lot of people say the same thing. And uh, the basic, uh, basically the opinion comes from um, the belief that um, omega-3 uh, um, acids are um, very beneficial to, to our health. And that's not, that's not uh, false, uh, per se. The problem is that this whole marketing thing about omega-3 is uh, ba base, basis in research from, I think, the 70s or so. And in the 70s, uh, they had research on, on Eskimos. What they found out was, uh, about, uh, on Eskimos, they, they had very little problem with heart disease and, and stuff like that. Although they were having a lot of uh, animal-rich uh, um, uh, food, uh, like fish and everything. So, um, they... They started researching and then uh, they came to the conclusion that uh, in the fish, that the oil from the fish, fish oil, um, had a lot of uh, um, omega-3. Uh, um, and and uh, the omega-3 uh, uh, fatty acids, um, they started researching them and, um, and found out that they, they have a lot of uh, benefits. So that's all um, okay. The only thing is that this f research from back then is totally debunked now. Because the Eskimos are, if you have the, the actual numbers and if you do a, a right anal analysis, you find out that they are not healthier. They, they are not heart healthier than we are. So you can eat all the fish in the world. It, it, it doesn't really help um, anything. So that's, that's one thing. And then the other thing is um, what I found out when I started researching omega-3 is you have plant sources for omega-3, like, for instance, uh, linseed oil, um, And um, is, is that even the right word? Yeah. Okay, okay. You, you know what I'm talking about. I told you I'm confused. <laughs> okay, so, so, so there, there are plant sources for omega-3, but a lot of research would like point to some conclusion that the fish oil is still superior to the plant sources. And I thought like, hmm, this reminds me of something. Uh, I was learning the same thing about protein, you know, animal protein is... Uh, and basically, um, in my book that I wrote in 2012, I'm writing that I have the feeling that a lot of the research might be influenced by companies who want to sell you fish oil, and they just try to sell the idea that um, the, the omega-3s from fish oil are superior to omega-3s from, from plants. That, but that was just an idea that I had. Uh, there was no research on that. And then one year later, um, there, I was so, it was so funny. I was uh, reading through uh, a few studies, and I found out that um, it seems that it, that's exactly what's the case. So it seems that your body doesn't, uh, doesn't, uh, really, um, do doesn't really give a damn if you get your omega-3s from plants or if you get them uh, from, uh, from animal sources. And also... Um, So uh, the, the, um, the omega-3s in fish oil are EPA and DHA. And if you really want to have exactly EPA and DHA, you can get algae oil that has that. So there is actually no reason. Because apart from the omega-3 oils, there is nothing in fish that has any biological, uh, biochemical value that you can't get out of plants. 
And as, as I said, even, even the omega-3s, you can't get them from algae. So that's what you can tell him. <laughs> okay, last question, if we can keep it short, please. Okay, thanks for your I question. Can't. Thanks for your speech, it was a great pleasure. Uh, I'm a vegan, I was vegan for two years and uh, my weight was uh, about 58 kilos. Now I'm a vegetarian and I still have problem with my weight, I'm a f flesh and bones. Uh, no matter what I eat, lentils, uh, rice, two plates, or beans, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, still have uh, problems to get weight. Mm -hmm. what, what the hell is going on? Yeah, well, um as, as I told you, um, I, I have the same problem on a different level because when, when I compete at Strongman, I'm competing against in the heavyweight category against people 2 meters 10, 200 kilos, so I have to be heavy too. So it's basically the same struggle, only different level. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm having a lot of liquid calories, and that's something that is very easy to do. So you basically eat as much as you can, and when you're done and full, you have one liter of chocolate soy milk. I promise you it will work. You, you do that every time you eat, it will work, promise. Okay, thanks. I would like to thank uh, Patrick Baboumian for being here. Thank you. Thank you.